and welcome back here at Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claudia, and I'm here with this brand new show called How To. First of all, happy 2022. I know it's been a little bit already that we are in this new year, but it's the first time that I'm here with you at Adobe Live for this new year. So I really want to wish you happy new year, everybody. And it's so lovely to see you. So many of you already in the chat. I know that it's been an incredible busy day here at Adobe Live, and we're going to keep the fun going here uh, with this new show. So before we get into it, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more of what we're going to be doing uh, today and in this series, I want to say hi to all the lovely people in chat. If you're watching from YouTube, behance.net slash live, that's the place where you can see the live chat and I'll be able to answer your questions. And as I work throughout this hour together, we're going to be able to maybe create something as well together. But most importantly, as I said all the time, Adobe Live is a safe space to learn together. So feel free to ask your questions. I learn so much from your questions as well. We're here together to have fun and to learn how to use the apps in order to enhance our creativity, learn new tips and techniques, and get better in this 2022 uh, with our design skills. So first of all, let me say hi to uh, Biola, Umacron, Steve Festus in the house, uh, Christine, Rob, Wade in the chat. Lovely to see you. Fabio Rossi, ciao. Um, fantastic. So let me know where are you watching from? You know the drill. I'm watching, I'm, I'm streaming from Manchester. Today is actually my first day in a new studio. I'm gonna send and share some of behind the scene on my social media so you can see how my new studio is set up. Uh, hopefully everything works okay. I'm actually gonna go ahead and check if there is a, if everything is okay in the chat. Hopefully everybody can hear him, hear me. Christine said it's cold in here, minus eight. That's a really wind, <laughs> windy cold. Here in Manchester today was actually not, not too cold, but fantastic. I'm gonna jump into my screen real quick because I wanna show you what we're gonna be working on. So let me do that. Uh, and here it is. So as you can see, uh, we're gonna be working with colors these two days, today and tomorrow. I'm gonna show you different techniques on how to create colorful banner while, while working in uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, we're gonna use some font, we're gonna use uh, gradients, but we're also gonna use a blend tool. So the idea of the show is to really show you different way in which you can achieve a, a specific output, a specific result, in this case, colorful banners, using uh, different apps, using typography, and using some of the wonderful tools. Uh, the beauty of working with these apps is that there are so many different ways to uh, create uh, these assets, but I'm also gonna share some books, share some links, you know, we're gonna have the usual fun time here together. And of course, freebies. In fact, uh, I already created this uh, template that we're gonna be filling together starting today but you can also find on my website, which is iamclady.com. And I believe the right link is um, freebies. Let me see if it actually is there. So yes, it's iamclady.com slash freebies. And under the resources, you're gonna be able to uh, access the social media banner 2022 templates. You will recognize the same thumbnail as the one as the show and just click on download. And once you do so, you're gonna be able to jump right away in a, a clean version. That's this one here, which contains many different artboards. Now, if we go ahead and we uh, select the artboard tool, which you can also access by using the shortcut shift off. Don't forget lots of shortcut coming your, coming your way. It's all about working uh, smarter and faster. Uh, you do not need to have to use this, the shortcuts all the time. I enjoy it. If you know, if you work with me before, you know that I love shortcuts. But if you don't like to use shortcuts, let me show you uh, where is the icon and where you can find it here on the toolbar. So it's this one here. 
once you click on this tool you will see right away that all the artboards um we're gonna they're gonna come with their labels and you will see that everything has already been labeled for you so we have a facebook link image a twitter link image and i'm gonna zoom in so you can see perhaps a little bit better because i know that those are tiny so we have a twitter link here it is twitter link image Facebook link image, Instagram, Instagram story, Pinterest, and also YouTube image and YouTube thumbnail. So I want to uh, give you this um, just as a reference. This one here, as you can see, as just a blank notes. So that's where we're going to drop our design and our sketches uh, before we actually transfer them into the final artboards. And something else you might want to notice when working together uh, is that they're already layer structured. Now you do not have to use the same layer layers are containers you find them under the layers panel for those of you who are just starting with illustrator you can find the layers panel and any other panel uh, that you can use in illustrator under the window menu here at the top you can see we have our layers selected if you don't see the layers panel that's where you can find it and it will pop up and we already have uh, multiple layers now when you start a new file usually you have one layer which is the container for your graphic in this case i've already created many layers as you can see we have a background image images drawings effects text and logo because that's the way that we want things to display in our artboard and also will allow us great control so we're going to be able maybe to tweak the text without having to interfere with the background by locking our uh, layers as we go but let me jump in the chat and see um if there is uh, any questions so far uh, steve is saying i love winter in canada oh yes i would love to visit canada I've actually never been um, fantastic while i look at the chat i'm actually going to bring you back into uh, some of the finals that we're going to be uh, working on today and i'm going to let you in the chat it's time to type in and tell me what do you want to start do you want to start with the lines do you want to start just with the gradient do you want to start with the text let me know which one in particular you want to start we're going to try you know we have time tomorrow as well so we're going to cover all of them and even more uh, the goal is to fill them all in but let me know in the chat which one do you want to start with today it's completely up to you i'm here to work together uh so i know that there is a little bit of a delay so in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and see what you guys have been up to in the chat so far and again don't forget that if you do want the freebies you can access them uh, at any time inside my website imcly.com slash freebies um, mercurial says text Megan Lines. Um, let's see. Let's see if we have more requests. Buddha Val in the chat. Val, happy new year. Nice to see you. I nearly missed, I was still getting ready, but uh, I'm gonna be uh, watching your um, stream as well. I love the cover, I love the purple. Very, very beautiful. So we have more for the line. Val, what do you say? Is that a poll already? <laughs> the first poll of 2022? Are we gonna do line or text or gradient? Uh, let's see what's going on in there. So, so far we have more going for the lines. I see you, uh, Mercurial, saying text, please. As I say, we're gonna cover everything. I just wanted to know where to start. Lines, so it looks like everybody wants to see how these cool lines come from. And also, and then I will go to the text because that seems to be the second one. Fantastic, so let's get started. As you can see here, I focus the content of uh, our work on color. Uh, and there is a reason why uh, we I selected this particular color. And uh, I'm gonna share tomorrow with you, I'm just gonna finish it off a little bit more. Uh, these, uh, we don't really need this pile here, uh, but uh, we have uh, some theory behind colors, the primary colors, the secondary colors, a little bit about contrast, a little bit of knowledge about the color wheel and the way that we combine color schemes. And some of the quotes that we're going to be working today are from uh, some amazing designers and uh, people that have published content about color. So uh, beyond uh, going the actual knowledge and how to create these different um, outputs with Illustrator, I want to share a little bit of knowledge in terms of what is the topic and the theme of these two days as well, which is color theory. So we have uh, Brian O'Neill, which is um, a wonderful, amazing person. I actually read one of his, an author, because I read one of his book, uh, and we have one of his quotes that has published on the Adobe blog, 
uh, at an entire post under discover we have an entire inspiration post about understanding color uh, so here brian has put all the amazing information about color theory so if you want you can go and have a look um is on the i'm gonna actually paste it in the chat here we're gonna have uh, uh, two claddies in the chat let's see if i can just scroll down so we don't make it too messy with the video and i can just share with everybody in here fantastic uh, here you have all the information about color lots of inspiration and uh, uh, information and which are also very pleasing to watch and very fun to watch but what are we going to be using as well is color.adobe.com if you haven't watched that before make sure that you go and check it out and i'm going to show you how to implement it into your workflow as you can see the color palette that is now selected there is a split complementary color palette and again if you don't know and if you're not bothered about all the theory don't worry because here once you go ahead and select the different uh, color harmony or color themes uh, right away you'll have a visual clue of where the actual colors sit on the color wheel and that's where you can get more information about color as well uh, the other author that i mentioned is uh, brian edmondson which is a designer from uh, sea london uh, again another quote about colors and then alina wheeler which is a wonderful branding designer uh, and also author published a lot of book and that's a little book time before we get started i have some of the books here that's from alina wheeler so that's where i pulled out the quote from because a lot of people ask me where do you get your inspiration from let's see if we can do it here so we have a uh, designing brand identity talking about color and then i have another one over here that's where i got um more quote from from dictionary which is a multicolor book so i still i'm still pretty old school i still um work with books so much in order to get inspiration but let's see how we can put that into action with illustrator so the first thing that i'm going to do here as you can see is just to start and build some lines and we're going to do that by using the pen tool so uh, let me see if there is any question before i actually jump into it is this color banter, banner intended for print? If so, do you manage the out of gamut colors? So uh, Rob, that's a fantastic question. I'm so glad that you asked it. Those are social media banner. If you go ahead and um, check out also the, uh, the general output files and if, you, if we have a look at all these artboard that we created for our banners they're all meant for social media so we're not going to have uh, any issues because we're working in rgb where rgb is exactly intended as an output for screen so we're creating a screen for screen and therefore uh, we're going to have a pretty much a very good knowledge of what the output is going to be and we don't have to worry about all these different um, gamuts and and the way we print print is a wonderful wonderful world and you know we can change color also using different media and different paper but in this case everything is for social media they're all social media banners again um, if you look at the artboard they're all made for instagram facebook pinterest and youtube banners Right, so let's get started with the lines. As I said, I'm gonna press the letter P to access the pen tool, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start to click in order to create line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replicate what I've done up there. So you can see by clicking what I do, I start to create anchor points. So I clicked three times and created three anchor points that will define uh, the line and the segments that I distribute uh, along these points. And then once I am ready, in order to let go of the pen to move on and create a different line, all I have to do to press the escape key and then i'm gonna go ahead and in this case i'm gonna create another line but instead of simply clicking i'm gonna also click and drag in order to create a curve now you don't have to be very precise that's the beauty of creating with this freedom and lines and also you can also change this line at any time and if you're wondering why those lines looks like they're filled and they're like a shape is because if we head here up to the fill and stroke control under the toolbar, you will see that the fill is set to black where the stroke is set to transparent. So all you have to do in this case is to click and drag or click and select um, the uh, objects that you want to edit. And then you can press the um, X in order to switch, sorry, shift X in order to switch the color from the fill to the stroke so shift x is going to move whatever color you have in this case it was just black it was just the default uh, by pressing shift x is going to move from the field to the stroke and we're going to have a better view of the actual stroke uh, that we are designing 
also these rocks look quite tiny they're not very visible so what we want to do is select them and head to the properties panel and here you're gonna uh, be able to access the appearance uh, command and from here we're gonna go ahead and set the stroke perhaps to three points and then maybe we can change the cap to round and also the corner to round so whenever we're gonna have a curve and an angle it's gonna be a little bit more rounded as you can see here rather than be sharp and again, I'm going to go back and press the letter P to access again the pen tool. And you can see you can find it also here on the toolbar at the very top. It looks like an actual calligraphic pen. And then I'm going to go ahead and click in order to create more anchor points to create other segments for our line. So at the moment we have three lines. You can do whatever you want, as many as you want. Uh, the last one is just another straight line. And again, if you need more space, like in this case, it looks like I need more space below into my notes artboard, you can stretch that artboard as much as you want. Shift O to go back into your artboard or click on the artboard tool. And then simply click and drag uh, one of the uh, bounding box, one of the side of the bounding box. You can make it longer, you can make it larger. That's completely up to you. And uh, now that we're talking about artboard, I want to share a little secret uh, that is very important when you're exporting uh, a specific size and you want to make sure that you export uh, the correct size. It happened to me, I don't know if it happened to you, if you have to upload a specific size and maybe you have a constraint, sometimes even if the artboard is the exact size, so in this case, let's have a look at this YouTube image here, it's a 1920 by 1080. If we export it, we might see that the actual size will vary of maybe a pixel. Something very silly, but that can be a constraint when you have to upload it somewhere on a website that requires a specific limited amount of pixels in terms of size. Well, the way that you work that around, and by the way, let me know in chat if that ever happened to you. You were absolutely sure that you did uh, a great job with your artboard and you set up the right size, but it wouldn't output at the right place. Well, that's got something to do with the way that um, Illustrator is structured and the way that the grid and the pixel match inside Illustrator. So what you want to do is to press the return key. And here, when we look at the position inside the artboard, we want to make sure that the number here is uh, it doesn't have any decimal. So all you have to do here is to go ahead and delete this decimal point. So we have a, a, a full number. It doesn't matter where the number is, that just you know defines the placement inside our pasteboard in, uh, in Illustrator. And once you're done, just simply press on OK. This little trick will be a great time saver if you're struggling to output the right size. Sometimes it just skips of a, of a pixel and it's not your fault, it's just the way the grid is with pixels. Sometimes they fall a little bit behind uh, or a little bit uh, extra, but that will solve your problem, absolutely. And I can see that Voodoo Bao has uh, shared the download uh, for the freebies, again, for everybody uh, that is uh, joining. There are full set of social media banners for 2022 available as a freebie. So you can follow along and you can just ride, jump and uh, design with me uh, these, all these wonderful, colorful banners. Let's see if there is any question. Rob is saying, sweet, less color shifting headaches. Yes exactly <laughs> that's the beauty of uh, working with web okay so let's go ahead and we're going to jump into a second in a tool that is called the blend tool let me know in the chat if you have worked with a blend tool before um if not don't worry and actually that's a question i'm really interested to know how many of you have already used illustrator any of you that are watching right now and hopefully if you are in the chat on behance let me know uh, if you used Illustrator before or if you're just starting. I know some of you are coming back so I can recognize some familiar faces, um, but let me know here if, you, if you're starting just now so I'll be able to be more specific as well while we work. Fantastic, so now we created our lines, it's time to uh, start and implement the color. Uh, so as I said, the color that I went to is, uh, that I went and I'm gonna be using is a, a split complementary color which is a, a pairs up uh, two pairs of complementary colors so comp complementary colors are gonna go ahead and see what they are inside color.adobe.com because as I said in there you'll be able to right away jump in between complementary color that you see they sit opposite on the side of the color wheel and uh, when we have a split complementary 
we have that and also the component of that color in terms of primary color and then a, a double complementary so a double double complementary usually gives you an x you can see it here so we have two complementary set and one of the primary color that is in between that set as well fantastic something that i want to get your eyes into as well is the wonderful accessibility tools that you have here in terms of contrast you always going to be able to check your text here to see if it's readable or not that's super super important for web accessibility since we're creating as i said for web uh, so i'm going to jump back into the color wheel and go back to our split complementary now you can go ahead and move and choose whatever color you want uh, that's absolutely up to you you don't have to use the exact color you can keep the same relationship of the color and just simply move it around the color wheel let's go ahead and choose another palette so we can have a, a look on how to implement it inside our illustrator file so once you select your color palette and you decide which color to use, all you gotta do here is to decide to save it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it into my Adobe Live 2022 uh, library. But if you do not know uh, how to use the libraries yet, let me go ahead and show you how to do so by heading into the libraries panel. So I'm gonna jump back into our uh, colorful banner and then in the library, you can go ahead and select the libraries panel from the window menu and then click on create new library in order to add a new library you can name it whatever you want this is just going to be a test so i'm going to call it test maybe zero zero just in case i have other test folders and click on create and the library is now available for you in order to collect store organize and share all the assets that you use for your project and this is super useful in order to work within a different uh, app you will, we're going to see tomorrow we're going to be using photography so we're going to see how we can add an image and then edit it directly into photoshop starting from illustrator so that's a very clever and time uh, saving technique but also you will see that it will group your assets by color and images and so on so now let's jump back into our colors at adobe.com and if we uh, look at our libraries we will see that we have a, a test Maybe probably have to um, re. Let's see if I actually give it a little refresh. If it loads the new library that I just created, here it is. Not only it loads the library, but it also gives us right away the new library that we have created. You can see we have the test 00 there. So our libraries are also connected with our Creative Cloud, and you can see that here I'm uh, logged in with my Adobe ID. And right away, as soon as I create something inside um, my libraries, inside the app, it updates on the web as well, which is super, super amazing. Right, let's go ahead and find the combination. That's absolutely fine. Whatever whatever color you like, uh, that's actually super cool. If you actually use it in your Instagram, feel free to tag me at I am Claudie or ask me any question on, on Instagram if you share any of this banner and I would love to see what you create. You can call this theme as you want. I'm gonna call it split. See if stand for split complementary, or you can write again, whatever you want, and I'm gonna call it zero two. And you can also decide if to publish it inside the Adobe um, color library. If you go here and uh, look on explore, you'll see those are all the different libraries that are, uh, sorry, the different color palettes that have been created, that have been created uh, by other designers. Talk about that tomorrow, as I say tomorrow, uh, by other designers. Talk about that tomorrow, as I say tomorrow, we're gonna work a little bit more with photography. You can also add any of these color palettes to your library. So let's go ahead and select any in this case we can add this one to our library and automatically adds into your library so let's go back in our create make sure that we have saved our split complementary number two and now it's time to jump back into illustrator and you will see that our color themes are there this is the first one that we have selected and is already uh, ready for us to use Let's see if we add the second one as well. Here it is. We just need a little bit of uh, lag time and it's absolutely there. Frank, lovely to see you. Thank you for being here. Steve saying salute. Steve, no Italian today? <laughs> Usually me and Steve a little, have a little bit of Italian chat within the design as well. Christine is saying, love playing with the color palettes. Yes, it's absolutely fun. And there is actually a game on color. so. Uh, there is actually a color game, so you can go ahead and play with different color. I used to play with that game when I was young. But let's go back and let's focus on our design and learn how we can make this cool effect for our banner. 
So the first thing that I'm gonna do here, in order to apply these colors that we have now saved inside our uh, color themes to our design, what we have to do is to click or right click on it and make sure that we add this theme to our swatches. So once we right click and select add theme to swatches, we will see that we can go ahead and from the window menu, that's the home of all the panels, uh, we can uh, bring up the swatches panel and get the swatches panel and you will see that the, this new color palette that we just added is right there saved for us to use during our project. So once we've done so, we can select our line and then all we have to do is to make sure that we have uh, the stroke selected here on the foreground of our stroke control and then all we have to do is select the color that we would like to use so i'm going to start here with the darker color for the darker purple and then i'm going to go ahead and select uh, the other different colors that we have in here and you will see that right away we can apply exactly the same color from the swatches now you have also the opportunity if you do not wish to save your color in the swatches you can just simply select the color and then click on the color inside the um, color libraries and you will see that the color will be applied to your right lines right away hopefully you can see it a little bit better now mohammed is saying in the best that I fully understand, how can I use the color palettes? Yes, and I'm actually thinking, let me know in the chat, put a little heart or whatever you want, or a little star, if you want me to share more about colors. I was putting this together. Uh, I know it's just the ABC of colors, but I don't mind getting ready for tomorrow. So tomorrow I will add it instead of in, together uh, in the social banner folder, so you can download it both. Let me know if you want it, if you want to learn more about color theory, uh, put a heart in the chat, whatever color you want, um, or a rainbow in the chat, and I'll make sure that I prep that for you. So let me know in the chat if you want that. Robzilla is in the house! Rob, lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Steve is saying, Sirzilla. Yes, thank you so much for joining us here. So again, let me know if you want the color schemes and uh, information in there. I'm happy to put that together, finalize it, and uh, add it in the same folder where the social banners are at iamcloudy.com slash resources ready for you to use. Okay, so we got our lines ready to go. It is now time to um, make a blend. And I'm keeping my eyes for any heart in the chat. I can see Woodoval with some hearts and we have some other <laughs> lovely, um, I, don't, I don't really understand what that emoji is. I think it's like a flash. Oh yes, it's, a, it's like a little, little flash. Right, so how do we create this effect? We're gonna use a tool that is super cool. It's actually the same tool that we're gonna be using with the text as well, which is the blend tool. Now, once we go ahead and click and drag our cursor on top of the different segment, you will see that they're gonna be highlighted and put together in the same bounding box. So we have select them all in the same selection. And now once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and select the blend tool from the toolbar. And then from here, we can go ahead and click on each one of the line and you will see, I'm gonna zoom in, so the first one is just a star, the second one is a plus, and the more I'm gonna go ahead and hover on the other word that I'm gonna add, you're gonna see the plus showing up. So uh, here we go, we created our lines composition here, uh, but the beauty doesn't finish here. What I wanna show you right away is that, first of all, you can access anytime this blend and the first thing that we're going to explore is how to change the number of lines so we can double click amari saying i think is a lighting bolt yes yes correct is a lighting bolt more appropriate than the flash <laughs> absolutely correct um yes so double click on it and you'll be able to change the number of steps in your blend uh, so as you can see the more i increase this number the more we're gonna have a, a super almost 3d wave effect uh, which is super cool you can use as many uh, steps as you want but also check this out you can also choose to move into a smoother color and in this case we're gonna have a, a wonderful effect of color transition coming through okay so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, press okay and once you're ready with that uh, you can also 
learn and I'm going to show you how you can modify your curve. So if you double click, we enter the isolation mode. So in this case, we have entered the blend and that will allow us to select each one of the lines and we can go ahead and move them so we can edit uh, our design as many times as you want. So we can change the space between the line. We can change and I'm going to go ahead and move the swatches panel out of the way. I'm going to consolidate it with the other panels so you can actually see the beauty of working with this tool. You can create infinite way uh, of blending your colors together. Um, and again, another thing that you can do is select the uh, direct selection tool, which is the white arrow over here, or let, press the letter A. And don't, not only you can move the entire line, you can go ahead and you can actually move this single um, anchor point that we created while we were creating the line. So you can move any anchor point that you wish. Uh, you can make perhaps this a little bit color more dramatic by bringing the lines together, or you can just give it a little bit more of a space if you want, just putting them away. And you can uh, also give a little bit of a, an extra oomph by creating different colors, uh, combination coming together or not. And if you want, you can also press the letter P to access again the pen tool and you can go ahead and click again in order to create another anchor point. So even if we have a blend already made, this is absolutely, absolutely editable as many times as you want. And now that we have created this new uh, and edited this blend, we can go back and also again, change the number of steps until we are happy and excited with our creation. I'm kind of, um, like this one right now i think that i'm just gonna stick with 30. i think that there is a good contrast in terms of uh the way that the lines are more put together i think that's actually very cool uh and dynamic way of uh of distributing colors so we have a little bit more of impact on the top and a little bit more space in between the lines and that's the why i also uh, create an alternated version of some curves and some sharp edges just to create a little bit more of that movement right so um i can see in the chat george saying happy new year and welcome back happy new year lovely to see you watching from south africa welcome thank you so much for watching and uh, thank you for being here destiny um happy 2022 to you happy 2022 everybody welcome back i'm so excited to be back with you i hope that this project is gonna keep you excited as well and now let's go ahead and move on for those of you that um, have just joined remember you can just follow together follow along uh, there is a starter file uh, ready for you to um, participate and use the same banners we are working on social media banners so we are producing an output for web and we're working on uh, with colors so the themes is social media banners and of course colors so i'm going to be showing you different way of creating these colors and gradients using different elements so once you've created your um, banner and you're happy with it uh, if you have a transition especially that leads into text i always suggest to create a line that transition back to whatever is the color of the background so in this example here we had a background in white in this case i'm going to do perhaps a reverse and do it in black just to create a different options why not so I'm going to go ahead and double click in order to uh, access our isolation mode. You can, you know, and you'll be able to uh, notice if you are in isolation mode or not, just by looking at here at the top, you will see that there is a, an, a gray line under your fine, under your tabs in illustrator, and it's going to allow you to move out at any time from the isolation mode by clicking on the left arrow, which allows you to either move in or out of different levels of isolation or completely exited. So in this case, we're just exited. So you can see once we select, we select the entire bounding box. And then to uh, access it again, just simply double click inside your uh, grouped. So in here, all I'm gonna do is to uh, perhaps press option and click and drag in order to create uh, another line. In this case, it is the line of the same color, uh, but as I said, I wanted to make it black. So all I have to do is to head to the properties panel and select black. And then it's up to you how close you want to make it to uh, your uh, other line there. So again, I'm going to click on it and just perhaps give it a little bit more space between the two lines. And I'm going to go ahead and select my direct selection tool because I also wanted to uh, give it a different shape. Here we go. I think we're ready with this one. It's actually nice and big. 
So what I'm gonna do here is uh, go ahead and use uh, this graphic for our uh, Facebook banners that which we have up here. Again, if you wanna know what, which uh, artwork corresponds to which channel uh, in terms of social media, all you have to do is to press Shift O and you will see that these uh, artboard have a tag. Uh, if you uh, also wanna learn more about them, all you have to do is to select and click on return and you'll be able to look at the name of the artboard but also the sizes. And again, those are all 2022 ready to go uh, social media partner sizes and they're, uh, they are available uh, in the freebies that I showed you before. So uh, once you prepared your uh, graphic in your notes artboard, all you have to do is to select it and hold the option key and you will see that your arrow will transform in a double arrow that will allow us to create a copy. Uh, so once you create a copy of your design, you can resize it. In this case, it looks like it's way too big for our banner. So I'm just going to make it smaller, just like so. And you'll see that sometimes when you make it smaller, the lines tend to be uh, tend to change the distribution. Now, I think that's actually really cool the way that it looks like. But if you preferred the way that it was uh, with a little bit more breathing space, um, you um, can go ahead and double click on the blend again everything is editable that's the beauty go ahead experiment try again and make mistake and try another time until you're happy with your result uh, so i liked it a little bit more spaced i think you know it gives a little bit more especially once we're gonna be adding a background and then click on okay once you're happy with it fantastic so what we're gonna do now is to uh, as we did for the other one just give it a little bit more of a frame so if we have a look at what we've created here we have a little bit of an edge above and below uh, so all you have to do here is to make sure that you click and drag in order to create a rectangle after you select of course the rectangle tool here from the toolbar I've used the shortcut which was the letter M that's why once I clicked it automatically uh, created a rectangle it wasn't a voice activated hopefully very soon we're gonna be able to design with our voice uh, but in this case um, all I did is just literally press the letter M on my keyboard and click and drag in order to create the rectangle uh, you can create the rectangle uh, ahead of any size that you wish in order to uh, distribute the margins as you prefer and then to make sure that that's actually centered inside your artboard you want to go ahead and select uh, the align options inside the align panel which you can find under properties or as i said all the panels are under the window menu so all you have to do is select windows and then make sure that you select align to bring up the standalone align panel and here i'm going to make sure to select align to hardboard which is now with this icon here it's the same icon as the artboard so that's super intuitive um, and once you do that i make sure that i align the object uh, horizontally to the center and vertically to the center so now i know that this rectangle is sitting in the right place and then all i have to do is to select click and drag to select both my blended color lines and the rectangle that sits on top and i'm going to use another shortcut which is command 7 if you're working on a mac otherwise it will be control 7 if you're working on windows but again i'm a fan of shortcut you don't have to be if you are not all you have to do is to go ahead and select object and then clip in mask and make you will see here that we do have already the shortcut shortcut highlighted so in this case you can choose whatever option you prefer but the beauty of working like that is that we're going to be able to create a frame and polish those edges uh, Rob is saying it's almost like using a gradient mesh but way more editable and moldable. Exactly. So a uh, gradient mesh are also a wonderful way to work in together uh, with colors but of course with lines you and steps you can create a different effect. Although you can pretty much almost transform it into a gradient mesh so I'm just gonna go ahead and actually use this example here as a copy and I'm gonna press and center vertically and horizontally again in this case i'm going to click on the blend and then again double click on the blend tool and change into a smooth color which gives you more an idea of uh, what we generally know as a gradient uh, and it has also the same definition of a grid uh, that you although create yourself so that's another option we're gonna have a look a little bit more into gradients into a second umakran is saying you're giving me ideas <laughs> rob yes absolutely um let's see if there is a question are we able to create outlines instead 
are we able to use create outlines instead? Amar, I don't understand the question. If you, if you don't mind, uh, tell me a little bit more. So um, in this case, I'm working with line already and path. If you're working with text, you can outline your text and we're gonna see how to do that. Uh, the reason why I use path in this case is because I wanna retain the uh, editable part of the of the line and the anchor points. Odari saying, Happy New Year! Happy New Year, Odari! I remember you done a, a wonderful Scully portrait of me, which I super, super appreciate and I we need to reconnect. Thank you so much for stopping by. Go and check his out. His, his work is absolutely amazing. Um, lovely, lovely to see you here. Uh, go, go ahead and check his streams and his wonderful work. And message me. We need, we need to catch up. Fantastic. So now that I've created my art, I'm gonna go back into my layers, and uh, I can see that everything that I've done so far is sitting into the text. So yes, it happened to the best of us not to be organized. But the beauty of working with layers is that you can select. Uh, your artwork at any time and then simply place it in the right and the correct layer by clicking and dragging so in this case I'm moving um, these colors inside my drawing so everything that is not text which you can also simply select so you can select your art here directly inside uh, your uh, layer panel you can just move and I'm gonna deselect this one here because I think that's actually text you can actually select them um, and then move them inside another layer simply by clicking and dragging now make sure that you select the right one here it is and as you can see all I do is just move that into the drawings I'm gonna go ahead and lock the text so make sure that I don't mess it up and uh, now I have my drawings here you can use the eye icon to make sure that you place it in the right layer and uh, what I'm gonna do now is gonna lock the drawings so they're not editable anymore uh, and then click on the background so I'm gonna press again the letter M and click and drag to create a background and as you can see here right away and I'm gonna go ahead shift X as I said before to shift from um, the stroke to the feel so again here we have a black stroke here we have a black feel um, and we have uh, these uh, sitting right away below. Why? Because the background layer sits underneath the drawing layer. So you can see the drawings are above and the background is below. That's why it's so important to use layers because they will allow you to work faster, to be more efficient, to have more control. And now if I want to move this background around, I know that I'm never gonna mess up uh, my, uh, my entire graphics. Let me know, do you want do you want the the black background i kind of i'm kind of fencing still the white background even more uh anyway we can keep one in black and one in white that's absolutely fine and actually that's bringing me to another point when you lock your layers if you want to go ahead and duplicate an artboard so in this case let's say we want to create a white copy and a black copy because you know we want to work with both so all you have to do is hold the option key and drag but check what happens once you drag in this case Adobe Illustrator let you know right away a hidden or locked object in the artboard will not be moved. So if I press OK, the only thing that is going to be moved is the background because the drawings were hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and press Command Z to undo. Go ahead and unlock our layer so we can edit it and then press the uh, Option or Alt key if you're working on Windows while dragging uh, our uh, graphics and because now our drawings are unlocked we have the uh, chance to actually uh, move also the graphics so now we have one in white and one in black and because this is white we're gonna also change the color of uh, our last line in here because that was the entire idea of having this uh, line at the bottom to match the background almost give it a fade uh, with our last color so I'm just gonna move that and change it into white and I don't know if there is any other um, I think I just selected the point by the way yes you can just change the color and that's a good very good reminder of uh, the mesh because you can change the color of each different point so there we go if it happens to you as well that perhaps you just selected one of these anchor points and again that's how you can change only that side and only that segment uh, to that specific color but I'm gonna bring it back now into black don't forget to command S in order to save your files as you go and all I'm left to do now is to bring one of the wonderful quotes uh, that we have uh, um, taken from different books and the different links that I showed you before. Amar is saying, I like the white more, looks more pleasing to me. 
don't like the black too much well while is saying Val is saying looks so good against the black that's absolutely up to your preference um there is definitely more contrast between the black the bright colors and the black um it's probably a little bit easy on the eyes on the white i like them both uh, whatever you prefer and if you want to keep the other line in black that's absolutely up to you the reason why i removed it is because i wanted to create that effect of just sort of like moving towards the color of the background and um, another thing that i'm going to be doing here is to go ahead now and select my text now let's go ahead and unlock the text layer in order to be able to uh, edit it and i'm gonna go ahead and choose a brian o'neill quote about color and again i pull these uh from different books and different uh website in this one in particular is from the discover creative cloud um blog inspiration tab where you can find a lot of information about color and how to understand color this is super useful super inspirational it gives you so many different information definitely go ahead and check it out brian has done a wonderful work uh, by pulling all this information together i really really enjoyed it right so um and, and by the way i'm not seeing his name in here i actually quoted him but i've seen him sharing it on linkedin so <laughs> i want to correct myself if, if there is another author behind this um i just noticed that there is no a name i kind of just uh, given an attribute i'm probably just gonna put the the actual link as a as a you know as a detail or as a quote uh for for this particular text that i pulled from this page i've seen brian shinner on linkedin so that's why i assumed that he created but i don't see any specific author in here so maybe the best thing to do is actually go ahead and we give a shout out to Brian. Of course, he's absolutely amazing and he shares a lot of, a lot of wonderful content. And I'm gonna go ahead here and edit the text to place the link. So what I'm gonna do is to double click on the right handle to transform our point type into a, a text uh, type. And here we can click and drag in order to uh, create more space into our frame, into our box, and then double click on the text. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste uh, the, the actual blog and article that we have in here. Here we go. So I like always to make sure that I give credits um, to wherever I pull out quotes. You know, in this case, I put it out from the Adobe website, which I found out through LinkedIn because Brian shared it and it's just right there. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and um, make sure that I give it a size that I know is legible uh, for uh, the web remember the minimum size that you want to use for accessibility is 16 points so in this case i would perhaps maybe use 20 points and i know it looks tiny but i'm quite zoomed out so we're going to go back and zoom in in just a second and you're going to see that um, right away it's going to look much more readable and again to move from the area type which is this box that allow us to change the size of the container and make sure that we just move and change the box Double click on the side handle over here and right away you will see that we transform this area type back into a point type. Now watch out when we work with um, a point type instead of area type, by clicking and dragging uh, the actual uh, bounding box, we're going to change the size of the text. While you click and drag on the area type, you actually change the size of the bounding box. Amari saying, Claudia, just take the credit for yourself, right? <laughs> no, I'm not creating myself, so <laughs> I will actually give the right credit, which is that website. Um, so, Stevie saying, I've begun easing uh, back on the total darkness of black view on the phone and computer, so mix of black and white for apps is easier to work with. For Max, check out that gray to pick apps to lighten. Yes, I love a black theme as well, but again, absolutely up to you. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a copy of the quote as well, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that here we have a little bit of a, uh, a different font from the uh, actual credit. So in this case, we have um everything fits into a sentence maybe we can just break it here uh in this case if you want to know which font i'm using the character that i'm using is called dean in bold and in light for the actual credits and i'm going to double click in order to transform this text into a point type just like so clicking on this little handle on the side fantastic so now i have my text i'm going to click and drag to select them both make sure that i align to selection 
and uh, right align it. And I'm gonna have to speed up because the time is gone. <laughs> I don't know where this hour is gone. Uh, but all I have to do here is now make sure that I move the text inside the banner and uh, it looks like our banner is uh, getting a little bit in the way with the text. So all you have to do is here perhaps is to move uh, this white line a little bit further uh, up and uh, maybe we can perhaps also move this a little bit up as well. So we have a little bit more of a, a different group you know um, color and you can also move the entire um, and, and scale the entire composition here just like so so we give more space for for the actual text and if that's not enough you can just you know move it up until you see that the text is sitting entirely into the the area of the background so just to give that legibility and again you can change that as many times as you want i know that we're running out of time, but here perhaps I would have just made sure that I give it a little bit more of movement, uh, just like so, and maybe just brought it down just because I like that little bit of movement that is uh, going on inside inside the design. Again, absolutely up to you. You can also scale it and don't forget to hold the option key if you want to scale it proportionally. Uh, but here we have here, we have our lines inside our um, inside our art artboard there ready to be published and also we have our quote with uh, the right background or the right credits on it now if you want to copy and paste exactly the same for the uh, other banner I'm gonna go ahead and create a copy here by holding shift and then I want to make sure that I have exactly whatever is happening below above I'm gonna select this artboard and click and press command C to copy and then I'm gonna head here make sure I'm on the light right layer which is drawing and then press command Oops. I'm gonna make sure that I press command and F to paste in place um, we want to get rid of this white here because we don't need it so you can go ahead and delete that white line and then I'm gonna do the same with the text so again command make sure that you select first the right artboard command C to copy then select the other artboard it's just important to make sure that you let illustrator know in which artboard you want to paste it and then command F uh, to paste it there and in this case we cannot see it because of course it's black on black but we can choose to change the color feel to white and again we can move these uh, little graphic a little bit higher up so we're going to be able to see the text to see the color and to see the graphic now we just have uh, literally a few minutes so don't worry we have another hour tomorrow and of course as soon as we finish we're gonna uh, there's gonna be more fun at adobe live with the xd daily creative challenge so don't worry there is uh so much more to go and amar is nearly 3 a.m oh, good night absolutely thank you so much for sticking out with us for so long don't forget that we're gonna be here tomorrow but before i say goodbye let me show you how to quickly export these two artboards use the option command e uh, shortcut that will be alt Control e if you're working on a windows and then all you have to do is to select the artboards that you wish to share so in this case i'm going to select this first one here number one and number 10 then select a folder on your machine in this case i'm going to go ahead and select my desktop i'm going to create a new folder and call it colorful banner and then click on create and then click on choose you can create a subfolder in this case we already done so so we don't need to do that uh, make sure that you select 1 and 10, which are the one that we intend to export. And then all you have to do is to click on export in order to see uh, your uh, advert ready to be published for the web. And again, this is a perfect way to export ready for web. You can see right away your file. It's ready to be posted with the right size for social media. Everything is ready to go. Don't forget that if you want to start and if you want to have a play um, with this technique, you can download the social banner 2022. But don't worry, I'm going to be back tomorrow and I'm going to show you uh, the text and the blend with the text and many more techniques here and how to. Thank you so much for having joined me. It's been an absolute blast. Now go and get a glass of water, a coffee, or just have a quick break because there is more fun here in Adobe uh, XD coming up at Adobe Live. So stay tuned. And of course, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.